What is up, everyone? My name is Lauren Wilson. I have run 50 miles at a sub seven minute per mile pace. I've run 100 kilometers at a sub seven minute, 15 second per mile pace. And I am currently training for the Black Canyon 100 kilometer 2025. And so I just wanted to start this vlog to start to share some of my training, keep, and then hopefully from sharing my training, sharing my experience, hopefully you can kind of take some of these concepts and take some things from my journey and apply it to your running journey and vice versa in the comments or if you ever want to DM me or email me or follow me on Instagram and message me, I would love to hear about your running journey. We're constantly learning from each other, constantly constructively building each other up and supporting each other. So for this first episode, I kind of just wanted to show you how I prepare. So I signed up about a month ago, and so we're about seven months out from the race itself, and I just want to show you kind of how I prep. And so first things first is, is why ultra? Right, so I've been my first ultra marathon was the Flagstaff to Grand Canyon Stagecoach 100 back in 2018, and at that moment in that season of life, my goal really was to to get that passion for for running again, and run for myself and expose some light on some deep dark things in my mind because I always loved running. However, my identity, not even so much my identity, my worth was tied up into some arbitrary time and performance measure of running. And then that kind of led to some other complicated mental things. I won't say mental health because I don't want to disrespect other people. But I was a lifelong runner, run, ran at the University of Texas at Austin. That experience didn't go well for me. Started coaching. Then I got out of coaching and I was in cycling and Spartan racing. And deep down, I loved running and I wanted to find that spark again. And so I watched David Goggins on the Joe Rogan podcast and he talks about the bathtub scene and how he was in so much pain, yet he didn't want to go to the hospital because he was so proud of himself in that moment. And he didn't want to be numbed out because he just wanted to feel the pain because the pain to him represented something far greater and far transcendent. And that was strength. And that was discipline. And that was self-control. And that was something back in 2018 that I was really searching for. And then as you get to know me a little bit more, you'll find out that I shouldn't have been searching for it in running, but at the time I was. So running to me was an idol as well. And so kind of bringing it back to right now, why why now? Now my relationship with running is a lot healthier. It's not my top priority. My worth isn't wrapped up into it, but I do like the discipline and the lifestyle of ultra running and I like the mental challenge and the physical challenge. I love the community. I love the stories that people share and, and the triumph and the pushing of the, the human consciousness and the human limits and being a part of that that narrative and that global phenomenon of pushing the boundaries of, of what this human experience has to offer. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen here. And so right here we have Black Canyon. I'm on the race website. Like I was saying, the first thing that I do is I look at the calendar. When is it? It's February 8th. Today it is July 6th. So we have July to August, September, October, November, December, January, February. We're about seven months out right on the dot. And so working backwards about 12 weeks out, so January, December, November, Around the first week of November, 12 weeks out, I will enter what's called a race-specific block. And so the next four months leading up to the three months is really preparing my body for the specific demands of the event. And so what do the demands of this event entail? Let's go ahead and go to results. So 100 kilometers is 62 miles on your feet. And if we go back and look at the results from 2024, 
we can see that the winner, Hayden Hawks, who is a world-class ultra runner, he was on his feet for about seven and a half hours. And so if we look, the top, the 10th time was eight hours and three minutes. And we'll just say 20th place, eight hours, 40 minutes. And so for me, let's say anywhere from eight to 10 hours on my feet. And next thing that I'll do is I want to go ahead, what pace is that? So if we go to pace calculator, go pace calculator here, pick an event, got kilometers. We're just going to go time wise. We'll just say eight hours. 100 kilometers, and what is that? That's going to be about a 743 per mile pace. So we'll just say 730 all the way to 10 hours. It's about a 939, right? So we're going to have to move our body at an average over the course of 8 to 10 hours at an average pace of either 7.30 to about 9.30 minute per mile. And so that's the first thing I'm looking at. Okay, so that's the pace. That's historically what it is. I know what I've run in the past. I know where I'm at currently. And so that's what we're looking for there. And then let's go to the course itself. And then I'll also, once I look at the course profile, at the elevation change, at the temperature, etc., I will also look at just YouTube videos, testimonials, kind of what's going on. So we can see that it's 62 miles, about 5,000 feet of elevation gain. Here is the race profile. So it goes downhill for most of it, but we can see that after 40 miles, there's a pretty big hill. And then again, at about 50 miles, there's a gradual hill for about five. And then one last killer before you kind of bring it in. And so I've, I've spoken to people that have done this race before, and they say that it's a fast course, but there are some technical areas, and then there's also the hills can start to sneak up on you. And so again, that's some feedback. It's going to be 8 to 10 hours, about a 7.30 to 9.30 pace. It looks like there's some fast sections where you'll probably be running – at a sub seven minute pace and then maybe some sections where you're going to be going slower because it's all about the average and so why is that important one we want to prepare our body for the demands from a first from a biomechanical perspective so what is my running form look like head to toe at these various paces and am i efficient and am i self-aware of how my body's moving and that's going to be the most important aspect over the next four months is first, my biomechanics. Second is my habits. So am I going to bed at a timely manner? Am I staying disciplined in all the other areas of my life? Because I'm not a professional runner. I don't really desire to be a full-time professional runner. I want to work. I want to be a leader in my community. I want to be a leader at church. And so stress is cumulative and I need to be realistic in the confines or the restraints of my life of what's going on but can am i able to to eat well fruits veggies meats am i going to be able to cycle my nutrition throughout the the various phases and then just building up the resiliency in my joints in my bones and in my tendons here over the next four months and so bringing it back to to today what I'm going to try to do over the next four months, because in the last 12 weeks, I live about 30 minutes from the course. I live in Phoenix, Arizona. So probably get out on the course six to eight times in those last 12 weeks and really run the course, get used to the course. But in the summer, what I'm going to be trying to do now is working on my biomechanics, working on my core strength working on the extremes or the polar opposites. And so what do I mean by that? I'm going to have a lot of half marathon to marathon specific paces. And so for me, that's going to be tempo running 8 to 12 miles 
at about a 545 to six minute pace. So I've run 236, 237 for the marathon multiple times now. Um, so about 530 to six minute pace, building up that capacity and starting to build up the volume as well. And also getting in a mix of longer hikes out on my feet. So rucking and just being outside for three to four hours, working on not having a lot of stimulation with music, not a lot of distractions because I want to pay attention to my hydration. I want to pay attention to chafing and I want to pay attention to um, just my, my fatigue levels and getting that feedback from my body. So some of my weaknesses in the past have been not executing on fuel, not executing on hydration and just trying to be tough and gritted out. And this, the, the goal for this is to stay present, stay patient and stay calm. And through that is just execution, execution of hydration, however many fluids, uh, milliliters or liters of water, that I need per hour based on my sweat rate. I'm going to use NYX to try to calculate my sweat weight. And then more importantly is my electrolyte concentration. I also want to get my calories or my gut to be able to digest and utilize nutrition, 300 to 400 calories per hour. But I'm going to talk to some different nutritionists and see if that's what is good for, for me. Because the biggest, the three most cited reasons for people not finishing their ultra marathon is... One is actually a gut, so you get an outside, upside down gut, you get gastrointestinal digestion issues, and that's because due to the demands of the sport, the blood is leaving the stomach, it's going to the muscles, and just managing blood flow to digestion and utilizing the digestion while continuing to move forward. Next is blisters and chafing, so you don't want to you want to stay in front of that as well with either squirrels, nut butter, as you can see here, or body glide, etc. And then third is just not fit enough. You're not getting through the checkpoints in a timely manner, so you want to try to minimize those as much as possible. And then, so that's that's kind of where I'm at now. Kind of what my training looks like is right now I'm running three to four days a week doing strength training two to three days a week, so squats, deadlifts, a lot of single leg exercises such as pistol squats, step downs, band walks. I'll share some of my running form later. Doing a lot of everything pretty much with no music, just trying to get aware of my body. And um, yeah, so that that's going to be it for now. Just trying to keep these episodes relatively short. So that's how I prepare. That's kind of what I'm working on, and I'm going to be putting these out once a week. So thank you for following along, and I hope you get some value out of this. Again, my name is Lauren Wilson. I've run sub 50 miles at a sub 7-minute-per-mile pace. I've run 100 kilometers at sub 7-minute, 15-second-per-mile pace. And I just hope by sharing my journey that you get some value out of it. And if you did get any value out of this, it would mean a lot if you told your friends about the channel or if you hit subscribe. All right, out. Happy running. Woo!